श्री वैष्णव विद्यापीठ विश्वविद्यालय इंदौर वेलकम यू ऑल इन टूडेज सेशन ऑफ आर वन वीक फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम फर्स्ट आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट कन्वेनर एफ डी पी प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री डॉक्टर कविता शर्मा मैम फॉर फ्लोरल वेलकम ऑफ आर गेस्ट मिस्टर निरंजन Thank you, ma'am. Without laboratories, without analytical instruments, men of science are soldier without arms. Absolutely true. So today, we all chemistry persons are going to enrich ourselves. with the knowledge of important analytical instruments this session is about online instrument demonstration of techniques ion chromatography voltammetry and their applications before starting the session i would like to introduce resource person of today's session mr niranjan mr niranjan he did msc in applied chemistry from regional engineering college trichy india then he joined as an application chemist at metro india private limited and has good knowledge and working experience with all the analytical instruments from metro kg having got an opportunity in marketing currently he is working as a product product manager at metro india for ion chromatography and alga water purification system and is responsible for pan india business He has been with Metro India for the last 23 years. He is a part of global experts and competitive intelligence for ion chromatography instrument. He has been involved in developing marketing strategies and promoted promoted product improvements based on consumer feedback. So let's or we all welcome Mr. Niranjan, sir. Please start the session. Yeah, thanks a lot, ma'am. You can hear me, no? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll just start. You can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So for one minute. <clears throat> for uh, streaming reasons uh, i will uh, stop my video so because it will take a lot of bandwidth so after the presentation again i will start on the video okay yeah uh thank you very much uh, ma'am for the introduction and a very warm welcome to everyone uh, a very good afternoon to everyone so i am niranjan the product manager uh, from metro india limited so <clears throat> first of all i would like to Uh, on the company on behalf of the company metro india we would like to thank professor dr balas subramanian and the organizers uh, especially head and professor dr uh, kavita sharma uh, department of chemistry and the management of uh, sri vaishna vidyapeet vishwavidyalaya for giving metro india the opportunity to present the technique and the product in this program so it's a hard uh, it's a heartful thanks for uh, giving us the opportunity and uh, the session will go on like this uh, first we will talk about uh, ion chromatography uh, i will give you a brief on the theory then we will see lot of applications then we will see instrumentation through a virtual demonstration we have our own application lab at our head office in chennai and we have a very good studio setup where we can show our uh, instrument through a virtual medium so like what you are witnessing now so that is the first then we have one more technique which is called uh, voltammetry as you know as you must have seen already so that uh, first we will complete ic uh, presentation then a virtual demonstration and then again proceed to voltammetry presentation and then followed by virtual demonstration so we have just allocated around 
one and a half hours for this and then we can have a question a question session for half an hour and uh, with me uh, i have my colleagues the team is mr surendran so he takes care of uh, ion chromatography demonstration then we have mr narendran so he takes care of the voltammetry presentation and one more colleague mr senthil who takes care of everyone because he is the uh, controller of everything okay so so first let me start with ion chromatography so what is an ion so so ion means it's an atom or a molecule with a net electric charge due to the loss or gain of one or more electrons so i have just split the word ion chromatography so we are seeing the definition of ion so it's an atom or a molecule with a net electric charge due to the loss or gain of one or more electrons so negatively charged ions are called the anions and positively charged ions are called the cations so negatively charged ions you can see the examples so they are uh, f minus that is fluoride then cl minus that is chloride no2 is nitrite no3 minus is nitrate sulfate is 2 minus so like this there are many uh, ions which are negatively charged which we call as anions similarly cations we have sodium potassium ammonium calcium magnesium strontium barium rubidium cesium etc so these are all come these comes under the cations so this is the definition of ion then what is ion chromatography so chromatography in general as you know it is an analytic is one of the analytical techniques so what are the other other analytical techniques we have spectroscopy is one more technique analytical technique we have electroanalytical methods which is one more analytical technique so like that chromatography is also an analytical technique where input is always a mixture and output is the separated components of that mixture which you can quantify or you can use it for qualitative analysis majority i am sure they are aware of liquid chromatography or high performance or high pressure liquid chromatography uh, which is mo mo most used uh, for uh, analysis of compounds compounds meaning uh, we call it polar compounds we have mid polar compounds we have non polar compounds so based on the polarity of the comp uh, compound we are doing the analysis we are <clears throat> separating the mixture between the stationary phase and the mobile phase and they have the interaction and then with after some time due to some uh, chemical reaction or it can be adsorption or anything so based on the uh, type of affinity so they are uh, moving into the mobile phase and stationary phase similarly here also we are following the same technique chromatography only but instead of compounds we are into determination of ions so compounds means it can be polar or non polar means you have delta minus and delta plus here it is not like that it's completely plus and completely minus so as we see negative ions are anions and positive ions are cations so ion chromatography is a method it's analytical technique only for the measurement of ions <clears throat> it's a rest everything is remains the same like you have a liquid mixture so which is as an which is the input and the output is the separated components separated ions here in the <clears throat> which are chemically similar then the analytes they come they compete for the spaces in the stationary phase and the mobile phase so here i have mentioned it as eluent eluent the other name is the mobile phase so the stronger the eluent shorter is the retention time as you know retention time is the key uh, term used in chromatography because that is what is going to de define like how much the compound or the ion has taken right from the point of injection to the time at reach uh, which it reaches at the detector so this difference is the this is called the retention time now how does ic work so components are separated by stationary phase and the mobile phase so there are different mechanisms so one we called ion exchange chromatography so ic can be define uh, differentiated into three type of mechanisms one is the ion exchange which is predominantly used 99% of application we use 
then we have ion pair then we have ion exclusion chromatography hope i am audible one word of confirmation will be good yes sir okay thank you then is the ion exclusion chromatography so independently you can determine the uh, amount of anions and amount of cations present concentration range definitely this technique can be used down to parts per trillion levels also so you can use right from percentage to parts per trillion levels so it is possible to use ion chromatography till that level so in general this is the skeletal uh, or i should say the schematics of the chromatography instrument so eluent or the mobile phase is constantly pumped through the entire system up to the detector using a pump and then we have the injector where we introduce the sample okay where we introduce the sample it can be a variable volume or a fixed loop both are possible and uh, and the mobile phase carries this sample into the main analytical column which is mentioned as column so that how we can say column or the stationary phase is the heart of the system where the actual separation takes place and then it is sent to the detector where it is detected so this is what this is the basic schematic of any chromatography system and this holds good for ion chromatography also now where it differs where ic differs from a normal liquid chromatography we we call ion chromatography as a technique which is a subset or which is an extension of hplc okay because the instrumentation remains the same only thing is the type of columns we use type of mobile phases we use they differ so and on the right hand side you can see the differences so <clears throat> this is a plot of stationary phase on the y axis and x axis we have the mobile phase so going by this group 1 the traditional tlc or the hplc which you are very very familiar so you know it is a normal phase chromatography means point number 1 that is polar stationary phase and non polar mobile phase okay so this is the normal phase chromatography where you have silica columns where you have alumina columns etc then we have the reverse phase chromatography where the you have polar mobile phase and non polar stationary phase so most pro uh, popular reverse phased columns are c18 columns so where 18% uh, carbon is loaded onto a basic silica structure so c18 is there c8 columns are there c4 columns are there so like that then our topic comes ion chromatography so let us talk about ion exchange chromatography that is point number 4 because majority of the applications as i said as handled by ion chromatography ion exchange chromatography so point number 4 is stationary phase and the mobile phase both are ionic in nature so that means what i cannot use solvents i cannot use 100% solvents like 100% acetone or 100% acetonitrile 100% methanol so i need a buffer i need an acid or i need a base okay so that's what i mean by ionic so if i have to perform ion chromatography the basic criteria is the analytes of interest the stationary phase and the mobile phase should be ionic in nature meaning they should be charged it can be plus or it can be minus so ions as you know so when i take a sample let us take a table salt table salt is nothing but sodium chloride as you know so once i put it in water it dissolves it dissolves means it becomes na plus and cl minus so that's going to be my sample okay so 0.1 grams or 1 gram of salt uh, sodium chloride i'm taking and i'm dissolving it in 100 ml water and we have na plus and cl minus ions in that now i need to determine how much of sodium is there and how much of chloride is there so for that i need to use a stationary phase so you can see the picture and on the right side top you see the uh, how the columns look this is the stationary phase 
so you see brown color uh, columns here so the brown color is due to it is not uh, it is not made up of stainless steel it these columns are made up of peak material polyether ether ketone because we are using day in and day out aqueous based eluents or the mobile phases that is water based mobile phases so uh, if i use stainless steel these may get corroded so that is the reason we are using peak material which is inert material okay it it has a very good ph range of 0 to 14 the entire ph range as well as it can even take some of the uh, solvents like uh, methanol or acetone or acetonitrile even up to 100% so that's the uh, stability of this peak material now coming to the column composition so basically we have three parts one is the basic substrate and then the spacer group and the functionality group so this substrate can be of different substrates one is a polymer substrate and one is a silica substrate okay so what exactly happens is if we have a polymer or a silica substrate we are coating this basic substrate using sulfonic acid groups so we call this process as sulfonation similarly when we do amination of the basic substrates so that is we we get this quaternary ammonium groups so and how these uh, sulfonic uh, sulf sulfonic acids are bound to the basic substrate using a spacer group normally it is a ethyl or a propyl group and not more than that so it is this sulfonic acid group which makes the column ionic in nature so this is the this is our ion exchange site nr3 plus this is our ion exchange site so where it is used so as you know uh, in ion chromatography the interaction is going to be positive ions attracted to the negative ions and negative ions attracted to the positive ions so we have this sulfonic acid group so where it is predominantly used it is used for doing the cation analysis because cations are positively charged and we need a negative charge on the column similarly anions are negatively charged so we need a positive charge on the column so all the anion exchangers they have this quaternary ammonium group or it can have alkyl amine groups or hydroxy alkyl amine groups or some other alkyl amines with acrylate type cross linking so this is what is very major if not so3 minus we can always use carboxylates that is coo minus groups so this is what is making the column ionic in nature and on the picture this is this is the outer shell and inside you have this material and there are different lengths of columns available from metrom so we have right from uh, 50 50 mm that is 5 cm columns is the, are there up to 25 cm columns are there this is 25 cm this is 150 this is 100 cm and we have uh, not 100 cm sorry 100 mm sorry 100 mm 150 mm and 250 mm so 25 15 and 10 cm columns we also have 5 cm columns for very, for very fast analysis so this is about the uh, uh, stationary phase that is our columns next we go to the mobile phase so as i said we will be using water based mobile phases so aqueous mobile phases so we need very good quality water so this is we predominantly use carbonate bicarbonate mobile phases we use hydroxide mobile phases we use borate mobile phases we use nitric acid mobile phases but among these we use predominantly more of carbonate bicarbonate and nitric acid the reason is these salts are readily available acids and salts are available readily available in any lab any small lab you have the availability of all these uh, salts and acids you don't have to invest on more it is we we keep a principle called uh, kiss principle keep it uh, short and simple okay so that is what we follow you don't have to invest on special chemicals we want to be nearer to the uh, research community it should not be very costly it should be affordable so that is the reason we have devised uh, the chemistry in such a way that we use 
regular salts which are used in in our labs salts and acids used in our lab so now what happens is that when i put carbonate bicarbonate let's say sodium carbonate or potassium carbonate in water it becomes what co3 2 minus and k plus or na plus similarly nitric acid when i put it in water it becomes h plus and no3 minus so these ions are in responsible for the elution of the sample ions so let us see an animation of how it actually works can you see the animation yes sir it is visible okay so this is the column and inside you have these beads and uh, i will further switch it on so you can see the ions moving inside the column so i'll pause it here so these negative ions so these these white ions these are negative ions these are nothing but our carbonate ions okay see in our in our mobile face we have some concentration of sodium plus and co3 2 minus okay sodium is not going to be attracted towards the basic uh, uh, column material because the sodium is positive as well as the uh, anion exchanger is also positive so it doesn't have any meaning so it is repelled but the those ions those white ions which are already um, attached to these positive ions are your carbonate ions so that is what so it keeps moving now let us introduce the sample inside the column which is a green ions and the red ions so you can see here there is an exchange happening the sample ions displace the eluent ions that is your co3 2 minus and they occupy the space okay this is what is the first exchange that is the reason it is called the ion exchange chromatography now you see we have our uh, ions from the eluent we have the sample ions let us assume the green ions are chloride and red ions are nitrate okay no3 2 minus are the red ions and the green ions are cl minus so further we move so you can see here so what exactly happens is at one point when they are attached when chloride ion is attached to the basic anion column at one particular point for this particular point there is a competition between one cl minus ion and several carbonate ions so carbonate ions will try to elude this out he 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 will try to occupy this space so there will be competition from several carbonate ions that is you have 10 percent trying to push one person it is like that so it is law of mass action so at particular point what happens is cl is it starts moving cl ions start moving out and you get a chromatogram here so you can see here the peak rises and that's the cl minus ions on the x axis we have the retention time so now the nitrate ions are eluted out so again there is a rise in the baseline so that is how the separation takes place so it is basically initially when we flush the column the sites are occupied by by our eluent ions then we introduce the sample they displace this eluent ions they occupy their space and then again these eluent ions replace these sample ions and then they are coming out through the detector and they are detected in the conductivity detector so this is how it works so there are two exchanges which is happening so that is the reason it is called ion exchange chromatography hope i am clear in case you have doubts we can always discuss so this is how the ion exchange chromatography happens so once when the analysis is done so i get a chromatogram like this so on the x axis we have the conductivity in terms of millivolt or we can even monitor the absolute conductivity in terms of micro siemens per centimeter also so this is an example where i have used 250 mm that is 25 cm column and 4 mm id that is the internal diameter so you can see here very very dilute solutions of carbonate bicarbonate is used 1 and 3.2 millimolar so 
the consumption of chemicals is also very less so that's the advantage with ion chromatography technique so we can do fluoride chloride bromide etc the advantage is not only we are able to do the halides we are also able to do the oxyhalides like chloride that is clo2 then bromate bro3 then clo3 chlorate is possible then perchlorate is also possible clo4 then you can distinguish between how much of nitrite is there how much of nitrate is there phosphite phosphate is possible sulfite sulfate is possible that is so3 2 minus so4 2 minus is possible so all these analysis are possible with respect to ion chromatography so you have many technique for cations for example sodium potassium calcium magnesium still there is no proper technique for anions ic is the best technique for anions so this is one of the advantages of ion chromatography so you can also do cations so you can see the concentration you see 3 millimolar again very very dilute mobile phase of nitric acid so here the h plus ions they compete with our lithium sodium ammonium potassium magnesium and calcium so you can see here the consumption of the, the fluorate is used is 0.9 ml per minute so the consumption of mobile phase is also very less and then the injection volume is only 10 microliters and we use a 150 mm or 15 cm column and we are able to distinguish between lithium sodium ammonium potassium magnesium and calcium now coming to the order of the element uh, elu elution why lithium should come out first why not calcium it is very simple lithium is a very small ion and it carries only plus one charge so lithium comes out first for example if you take lithium sodium ammonium potassium all three carry single positive charge but if you see their size lithium is smaller than sodium than ammonium than potassium so potassium is larger in size that is the reason it is coming in the fourth position now comparing potassium and magnesium so potassium is plus one charge but potassium is bigger in size than magnesium but magnesium has two plus charges so it is bound to two ion exchange sites so pulling him out is very difficult so that is the reason magnesium comes next so this is how the elution pattern happens so it is basically the charge and size ratio which determines who should come out first so this is the basis of the elution next and then we have the conductivity detection so how it happens so <clears throat> many are uh, not aware that uh, that i mean many are under the uh, impression that we are measuring conduct conductivity it is not the case we are actually measuring the resistance how so we have a conductivity cell so the flow cell is less than 1 microliter can you imagine it is less than 1 microliter that's the volume we have two electrodes like this it is made of stainless steel and across which we have the uh, measurement resistance measurement okay now what we do is when we apply a voltage across these two electrodes and we when we apply the voltage there is an electric field between the two electrodes so when the ion comes it starts conducting current so you can see here when the ion comes you can see the movement here so when it starts conducting current so v equal to ir that is our ohms law so we know v we know i so we are actually measuring the resistance so inverse of resistance is conductance and since we have to take into the area of these electrodes as well as the length of the length between distance between these two electrodes which is which we call it as a cell constant we define conductivity as micro siemens per centimeter so this is the reason so whenever you see a ion coming in you can see a peak here that's how we measure one important thing conductivity varies per degree celsius so how much is the variation it is nearly 2% so we have to keep this entire flow cell at a thermostated condition and metrom can offer you uh, when you fix a temperature you we promise you a stability of plus or minus 0.001 degree celsius that is 
if you fix 35 degrees as the thermostatic temperature we can promise you 35 plus or minus 0 0.001 degree stability so that's the most important we as a manufacturer of ion chromatography we started manufacturing conductivity meters and detectors 80 years back so we have literally mastered the electronics behind this uh, measurement next is the amperometric detection this detector is used whenever we have we have problem of measurement uh, when we are not able to do uh, measurement using the conductivity detector one or it can be due to the ion nature itself or it can be due to the sample matrix for example cyanide cyanide analysis can be done in water cyanide up to 200 ppb that is 0.2 ppm we can do by conductivity detector okay but normally people do cyanide analysis at lower ppb levels that is 1 to 10 ppb levels because cyanide is uh, toxic and people are i mean you cannot normally people do at a lower level only 1 to 10 ppb for that we need to employ this kind of detectors so this is a detector which we otherwise called as electrochemical detector which is used not only for cyanide, you can use it for analysis of uh, sulfide, that is S2 minus. You can use it for the analysis of arsenite. You can use it for the analysis of methanol, ethanol. Then we can use it for the analysis of phenolic compounds. You can use it for the analysis of biogenic amines. Then we can distinguish between how much glucose is there, how much sucrose is there, how much lactose is there, how much uh, maltose is there, so you can di 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 uh, differentiate between different monosaccharides, different disaccharides and different oligosaccharides also. So as you know, in uh, we have this FOS, so fructan oligosaccharides. So those, are also, those also can be done using this uh, detector. Now, let me tell you how it works. So we have a three electrode setup, a working electrode, RE means reference electrode, and we have AE auxiliary electrode. So what we do is we, the entire reaction happens on the working electrode. So what we, we apply a voltage on the working electrode. So you can see light blue turning dark blue. So something is happening to our ion. So, so you can see again, light green turning dark green. So some reduction or oxidation is happening to our ion that reduction or oxidation current is measured by the between working electrode and auxiliary electrode so this is what is actually happening and how we apply a potential depending on the um, uh, with respect to the reference electrode we apply a potential on the working electrode reduction or oxidation happens to our ion and then that reduction or oxidation current is measured between working electrode and auxiliary electrode. And this current is proportional to the amount of analyte present in your sample. We are running sample as well as standard through the same technique. So it is, again, as you know, chromatography is a relative technique. So you have to run the standards and then you have to plot a calibration curve. Then you have to compare your uh, sample response. So based on that only we do. So here also it is the same. So it works perfectly. Then we have the UV visible detector. This can also be used. UV visible detector, as you know, if they have chromophore, yes, we can do even the uh, some of the organic acids, some of the organic compounds in, used in HPLC. Here, predominantly, we use UV visible detector as a photometric detection. How we use is that uh, we use, uh, for example, for determination of transition metals. Transition metals are possible by conductivity detector also, but we can go only up to maximum 40 ppb or 30 ppb that is parts per billion but if i want to go down the levels less than 10 ppb this kind of detector is required so how we do is that when the ion eludes out of column it is mixed with a reagent we call it post column reagent so they form a complex they have a characteristic color that color will be 
uh, I mean, that complex will be sent into this UV detector, you can see here. So this is the source and this is the detector. So there is an absorbance measured. So that's how you get a peak here. So this we call it as a photometric detector. And one more application I can suggest to you is we can determine amino acid analysis according to United States Pharmacopeia method one. So we can determine, we can do a profile of amino acids with this detector. Next, we can, of course, couple ion chromatography with mass spectrometer or ICPMS also. So this is pos uh, possible and we can connect it to any of the mass spectrometer or ICPMS available in the market because we do not manufacture them. This in case if you want to go for more selectivity and more sensitivity analysis, we can do this. So this is how the this is about a brief on ion chromatography, what are the detectors used and uh, how we do it. So this is the periodic table, which gives you a comprehensive view, which is possible with, with metrome systems. So wherever you see color, it is possible and we have established nodes. So just for your understanding, uh, I will explain you one of the analytes. Like for example, I will take arsenic, where you see all the four colors. So what it means is I can do speciation using ion chromatography. So I can distinguish how much of arsenic three is there and how much of arsenic five is there. Okay, that is possible. So that is why I have mentioned it in green, uh, in uh, red. Then it is possible by conductivity detector to, de to determine arsenic three and arsenic five. We do it as arsenite and arsenate. And with UV, we do it as arsenate. And with electrochemical or amperometry, we do it as arsenate. So conductivity can determine both of the species, arsenate and arsenate. UV can determine arsenate. Amperometry can determine arsenite. So this gives you a comprehensive view of what all is possible with ion chromatography, including speciation. For example, chromium-3, chromium-6, Fe2, Fe3, Pt4, Pt6. SE4, SE6 can be done by ion chromatography technique. And we can also do thorium and uranium, which we have done it for the uh, Baba Atomic Research Scientists. So we have developed method for them. So that is also possible. So in short, what all is possible with ion chromatography? So anions are possible, cations are possible, transition metals, including lanthanides, uranium and thorium. Speciation is possible, organic acids and fatty acids. Uh, fatty acids of lower molecular weights, amino acids are possible, carbohydrates are possible, aliphatic and biogenic amines are possible. So this is the capability of ion chromatography. So where it is used in many of the industries, so academic research and projects, they study on speciation, they study on all kinds of water, hardness study, wastewater, pollution control, etc. Then we can even monitor aerosols and gases, uh, energy in in power plants, whether it is thermal power plants or nuclear power plants, to monitor the health of the boiler, you have to monitor sodium, chloride, silica, hydrazine, morpholine, ammonium, etc. So that is possible. Petrochemicals, that is petrochemical industry where petrol is produced or refined. So you can see DM water they do, fuels analysis, biofuels can be analyzed. So biofuels means you must have heard of biodiesel, so that the analysis is also possible amines, polymers, fine and specialty chemical industry, pharmaceuticals. We are taking tablets, right? We are taking tonics. We are taking in with, there are infusion solutions, injections available. So in those impurities need to be determined. So we can use it for the, uh, those ionic impurities, we determine using ion chromatography. Food, similarly, carbohydrates, amino acids, organic acids, surfactants, anionic and cationic surfactants can be determined. So this is the wide range of uh, applications of ion chromatography. We will see a lot of applications. I will show you some examples also. So why ion chromatography? So it's versatile and cost saving because we are talking only about using laboratory chemicals. Simultaneous determination of multiple ions, more advantages than spectroscopy techniques or ion selective electrodes or capillary electrophoresis. I don't use any gas. We, there is no three or four gases required. There are no lamps required. There is no shelf life of lamps. Nothing is required. It's just a simple solvent driven system. 
where you don't even need any gas assistance. Better selectivity and sensitivity, percentage to patch petroleum is possible. There are several sample operation uh, options available and matrix effect is bare minimum. So that was about ion chromatography. There is one more small, small but very important concept in ion chromatography. It is called the suppressor. So here, <clears throat> earlier I showed you a schematic where there was an element, there was a pump, there was an injector, there is a column, and there was a detector straight away. Now, here I'm introducing one small component. This is basically a consumable, but Metrom gives you 10 year warranty, unconditional. Okay, even if it goes bad also, we replace it on the ninth year also, no problem. Even if it goes bad on the ninth year, we give you free of cost replacement. Let us see what that suppressor is and why it is you uh, necessarily be used. So we will see next with very simple concept. So suppressor used is in an anion analysis, it is a cation exchanger, meaning it will trap all the cations and it will give away the H plus ions. So if sodium or potassium or calcium or magnesium is present, it will trap all those and in return, it will give you H plus ions. So that's a, that's the job of the suppressor. So <clears throat> let us see how it works. So for example, I am taking an element for anion analysis, sodium carbonate and bicarbonate, okay? I, I said that suppressor traps all the cations. So what happens is all the cations are trapped here because suppressor is also a ion exchange mechanism only. So it is a, you can consider it to be a small bed, small column after the column. So this suppressor traps all the holds, all the cations and in return, it gives H plus ions. So my basic sodium carbonate and bicarbonate mobile phase is converted to a low conducting carbonic acid. One. Now further, this breaks down to carbonic acid is, as you know, kind of uh, reversible kind of. So it further breaks down to H2O and CO2, not completely. You will have some dissolved thing also. So, but majority you find water and carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide goes off. Now from high conducting element, it is converted to a lowest conductivity using the metrom suppressor module. Now, what is the advantage? It reduces the background conductivity or the mobile phase conductivity. Now, let us look at the sample. My sample was sodium chloride. And when it passes through the suppressor coming out of the column, all the sodium is trapped and it is converted to the respective acid. So, when sodium chloride is converted to HCl, that means it, it is getting converted to an acid. An acid, you have high dissociation. When there is a high dissociation, there is high conductivity and there is high conductivity, there is high sensitivity. So this is the reason the suppressor really, really helps in, uh, determin in the determination of uh, anions down to parts per billion levels. So the job of the suppressor is to reduce the mobile phase conductivity, as you see here, and increase the analyte conductivity or the analyte sensitivity. So schematically, I will show. So the suppressor, this is sodium carbonate element. So the values, let's say around 660 microsiemens. When I use the suppressor, straight away it comes down and the background conductivity is somewhere between 10 and 20 microsiemens, okay? And now you can see the compare the peaks of sodium chloride and hydrogen chloride. So how prominent is the peak? So this is the reason we are able to use the suppressor for reaching uh, 1 ppb levels or 0.5 ppb levels of fluoride uh, with suppressor. And this suppressor from Metrom carries 10 year unconditional warranty. <clears throat> so we are very confident about our suppressor. Now this that was about the brief on theory of uh, ion chromatography. So let me go into the applications part. So this technique is approved by US EPA 
these are the standardization bodies as you know us environmental protection agency then we have uh, astm then afa is there then american water works association is there in pharma we have this uh, usp united states pharmacopeia european pharmacopeia Jap japanese chinese indian then iso indian international standards organization then we have european norms then we have german din norms then we have the aoac which is mainly for food so all these standardization bodies have approved ic as one of the techniques including our fss ai as well as our bis so we will see some of the examples now these are the methods which are listed in epa which are listed in european iso din norms so one is 218.6 it is talks about chromate in drinking water and ground water so 300.0 talks about standard anions in tap water so like this there are many norms available conditions are mentioned and we and metrom instruments and metrom applications are in comply uh, definitely complies 100% with these uh, norms so some examples i will show you as STM D eight thousand one. It talks about gel dial nitrogen by ion chromatograph. So you can determine total nitrogen, you can determine to gel dial nitrogen, and you can determine total phosphorus using ion chromatography for water and wastewater. So how we do it? So we do <clears throat> we take the sample, we we do per sulfate digestion where all the organic nitrogen and phosphate are converted to total. So you get total nitrogen and total phosphate. Without digestion, when you inject, you get inorganic nitrogen and inorganic phosphorus. So, in the calculation, you can always say gel dial nitrogen is equal to total nitrogen minus inorganic nitrogen. This can be made in the software. So, you get automatically all three results in one shot. So, this is how we comply with the international norms. This is one of the examples which I want to show you. Then, in fertilizer industry, we can do polyphosphates in fertilizers, then perchlorate in fertilizers, fertilizers after acid digestion, then liquid fertilizers after acid water extraction, then multi-ion analysis. Here you can see, so not only you are able to do fluoride or chloride, so between fluoride and chloride, you can do some of the organic acids gluconate, glycolate, formate, acetate, lactate, methane sulfonic acid, here it is, then malate, succinate, malonate, malleate. So see the capability of these techniques. So many analytes can be done. Then this is standard anions in river water monitoring. So you can see here sulfite and sulfate. So you can see 9 and 10 peak. So that is about that. Then cations along with rubidium and cesium. So this first two peaks is nothing but sodium and ammonium. Then we have potassium, rubidium, cesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. Then bromate. Why we should do? What is the importance of bromate? Bromate is a known carcinogen. So during ozonation of source water, naturally occurring bromate gets converted to bromate. So the WHO guidelines for packaged drinking water is 10 ppb. So we can determine those. So this is bromate in tap water according to EPA 326. So our BIS, our Bureau of Indian Standards has implemented IC as one of the technique for bromate in packaged drinking water. Okay, so this is how we do. So this is bottled water. So you can, de you can do these oxyhalides, chloride, bromate and chloride. So this is how we can do. Then aliphatic amines. So these are used uh, mainly in uh, soap industries, pharmaceutical industries, chemical industries, etc. But when these are get into the aquaducts, I mean, so not aquatic, uh, not aquatic, aquatic systems, you have already naturally nitrites present in the aqua systems. So when they mix with them, no, they form nitrosamines. So nitrosamines are again very carcinogenic in nature. So we have to monitor. So we can do. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> We can do some of the amines that is alkyl amines are possible then alkanol amines are possible so you can do uh, monoethylamine diethylamine monomethylamine trimethylamine 
you can do monoethanol amines diethanol amines triethanol amines so all these along with our regular cations that is uh, sodium ammonium etc then this is about sodium ammonium methylamine guanidine and amino guanidine these guanidine amino guanidine are used in urea basically then cyanide and sulfide analysis cyanide as i told you we have determined 0.5 ppb in refinery process water so this is using the amperometric detector then we have the phenol analysis using dc detection phenol and its family then we have transition metal analysis using uv visible detection then we have lanthanides which we did it for the nuclear research people that is barc and ig car then uranium and thorium we have done for them then chromium chromium as you know it occurs in 3 and 6 6 is very toxic so chromate and toys this particular uh, Uh, analyte what you are seeing is chromate and toy analysis then chromium speciation chromium 3 and chromium 6 is possible then arsenic where arsenic 3 is very poisonous okay so this is possible using ion chromatography you can see here arsenite which is arsenic 3 and arsenate which is arsenic 5 and selenite which is selenium 4 and selenate is selenium 6 it is possible using ion chromatography ion speciation in water and waste water pesticide analysis i am not projecting ic as a pesticide analyzer if you have pesticide analysis along with majority of the ion analysis we can use our uv detector couple a say with a c18 column we can use ic for a pesticide analysis for some of the polar pesticides similarly this then surfactant analysis long chain anionic surfactants then cationic surfactants then food samples bromate in flour that is your bread so or the flour which is used for bread or br biscuits or any kind of the nitrite and nitrite in milk melamine in milk powder then glucose and fructose in honey so as you know this is very essential because you get spurious honeys now nowadays because they just add jaggery water into it so what happens is sucrose is more than 5% if sucrose is more than 5% in any honey samples that means it is already adulterated so it should, the limit is just less than 5% then uh, lactose and lactose free milk so you must have heard people having lactose intolerance so you have to monitor lactose and lactose when when some company claims it is a lactose free milk we have to determine whether really it is lactose free because the process you know then carbohydrates in instant coffee so you can see here mannitol sucrose arabinose so all these are some of the parameters being in, monitored in coffee then malt extracts amino acid analysis this is according to usp then some of the pharma applications phosphate and phosphate in imbentanate sodium then phosphate binding capacity then free sulfate in inoxaparin sodium then sulfate and sulfamate in topiramate tablets then nitrate and lanthanum carbonate these are all pharmaceutical com, uh, apis so where they wanted to do ionic impurities then uh, this is a anti cancer drug Bu busulfan so there they wanted to know how much of methane sulfonic acid is there then in power plants as i told you it can be thermal power plants or nuclear power plants where they have to monitor the boiler the health of the boiler how do you monitor health of the boiler because it it leads to corrosion no that is presence of chloride or nitrate or sulfate so these lead to corrosion so we can monitor them down to you can see here ppt 0.461 ppb basically that is 461 ppt this is 50 ppt of sulfate so how sensitive is the technique then similarly cations so they use they you have to monitor sodium which responsible for scaling then ammonium is there then hydrazine morpholine diethanolamine etc so sodium is continuously monitored then silica analysis 
that is also we can do then we can couple it with icpms as i told you so chromium speciation coupled with icpms then selenium speciation arsenic speciation and mercury speciation so these are the analysis which can be done with our system now we can go to our virtual demonstration of our system Sandil? Hello, Sandil? Yes, sir, Naranjan, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go to... Yeah. Sandil, the video camera, is... camera is not straight, Sandil. Yeah, fine. Yes, Surinan, start, start. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome to all. This is a live uh, demonstration of our ion chromatography instrument. So, my name is Surinan. So, I'm taking care of uh, ion exchange chromatography analysis in the uh, last seven years in this organization. So, this is our ion chromatography instruments 940. Yes. Turn the camera, no? Yeah, one, one minute. Uh... So now we can see our instrument uh, 940. So professional IC radio. And uh, you can see this is the element organizer. So uh, you can say it is a mobile face. So you can see uh, we can keep almost uh, four element bottle in the top of the instruments. And you can see this is the reagent bottles for uh, suppressor reagent and uh, rinsing of our suppressor solutions. This is ultra pure water for uh, suppressor uh, treatment and if you're opening the instrument so this is a look like a anchromatic yeah. yes 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 go ahead this video is uh, mirrored or it is okay no no it's okay it's okay no? okay thank you hope everyone everything everyone can see this can you give a word of confirmation ma'am please yes sir it is visible Clearly okay. visible. Okay, okay, thank you. So it starts from the element mobile phase. So it is uh, normally ionic in nature. Uh, for anion analysis, we can keep a sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate element. In case of cation, so we can use a diluted nitric acid. So this is the generally we are using for our anion and the cation uh, applications. So this instrument, the 940 instrument, is capable to analyze anion and cation parallelly. So this is a, just a parallel instrument. So we have uh, different instrument like uh, isocritic instrument and gradient instruments and uh, for a parallel application for anions and cations. And uh, right now we kept for a parallel applications. We have uh, individual uh, instruments also like a uh, single channel system. So there we can analyze anion at a time. And once analysis is completed, we can change over to cation analysis. That kind of uh, facility is also available. So this system can capable to analyze anion and cation parallel. A parallel, or we can say simultaneously. You can see all the components are uh, it is in a two two. So for example, so this is the element. It's starting point. So in uh, in our uh, presentation, uh, this is uh, showed uh, our chromatography uh, propa. So it is an element. After element, it's connected to the uh, high pressure pump. Here only the uh, element is connected. So this element is came through a uh, gravitational. Once it is reached to pump, the pump will carry the element throughout the system. So this is the uh, main job of this pump. So after this pump, it's connected to the purge wall. So it is called the purge wall. So is there any air bubbles in the line that can be removed by using this purge wall? Okay. After this purge wall, it is going to the inline filter. Okay, so here uh, 
if there are any particles in the element so this will take care uh, to the particles from the element after this uh, inline filtrate is going to the pulsation dampener so it is uh, just a pulse reducer we can say and uh, this high pressure pump is working like a pull and push mechanism so there is uh, some uh, flow gap in the uh, element flow so if you are using this pulsation dampener uh, it will uh, smoothing the baseline or uh, it's smoothing the flow so after this uh, pulsation dampener it is connected to the injector okay so this is our uh, injector you can see six port injector here only we are introducing the samples okay so you can see it is a uh, element in and element out and this is the sample loop so the sample loop can be variable from uh, 10 microliter to 1000 microliter based on our uh, sample uh, concentration and the upper two ports is uh, sample in and the sample out okay so here only the sample is introduced once sample is injected so the pump uh, the element will carry the sample and it's going to the column so this is the column compartment and uh, right now the instrument is running so you can see this is the column okay and it's a ion exchange column so this is the god column actually so it is attached to the main column so to protect the main columns okay so our metron columns are i columns so you can see this is the chip over the head so i column means we can say it, it is a intelligent columns okay once it is connected to the instrument so it will recognize the column what column it is and uh, what is the uh, uh, flow rate this column can operate so what is the default uh, element can be used for this column okay so and how many injection was done and how many hours was this column is operated so this kind of information everything will be stored in the chip and whenever we want the data we can really collect in our software that we, it will be visible only okay so once the separation is done it is going to the suppressor part for generally anion okay so uh, here uh, what is doing the suppressor it is reducing the mobile phase conductivity and it is increasing the analyze sensitivity once it is done it is going to the detector so this is a conductivity detector okay there are only the analytes getting sense once it is sense it is going to the uh, it is converted to the uh, uh, like uh, data that data will be uh, sent it to the pc there we can uh, get the results okay and you can see one more part it is called the amperometric detector okay so we can do uh, simultaneously anions and carbohydrate with the help of this instruments okay so at a time we can connect two different detectors right now it is conductivity and an amperometric detector okay as well as we have uh, two different pump you can see this is one one is used for anion or cation application another pump can be used for carbohydrate applications so simultaneous application can be done with this this instrument okay so that is the advantage and uh, this is the pod is called peristatic pump it is used for uh, regeneration and rinsing of our suppressor i will show our suppressor how it is look like okay so this is the suppressor part so this suppressor it is called a packed bed suppressor this suppressor only it is kept it inside okay it will be inside the pot okay so it is having a three identical chamber you can see chamber 1 and chamber 2 and chamber 3 each chambers having a two path in and path out okay so one chamber is used for analysis another chamber used for regeneration and the third one is for rinsing with ultra pure water so once is analysis completed the rotor will be rotating like a clockwise direction like 180 degree angles once is analysis completed the used cat is it's going for the regeneration and the regenerated cat is is going to the rinsing okay so once it is rinsed we will get a fresh cat is for the next analysis so it is a, everything is simultaneous process it is controlled by the software okay once then everything is going to the conductivity detector okay so this is the flow part of ion chromatography instrument and i will show auto sampler part how the sample is getting injected into the ion chromatography system so this is our 858 ic auto sampler so we can keep a ton of lot sample into the auto sampler so each analysis it's record only 1 ml or 1.5 ml it is a sufficient for this uh, anion or cation applications 
right now it is going for the injection now it is taking the sample to the system okay so it is going this way and this is the peristaltic pump so it is sucking the solution from the powder sample once the solution will be transferred to the ic system the loop is getting filled then it is going for the injection once injection is done it is going to the rinsing so the flow path everything will be rinsed by the ultra pure water so ultra pure water we kept in this so it will take the ultra pure water it will clean the line and it is ready for the next injection like that only the water sampler is working for the injection okay now it is going for the cleaning once it is cleaning done and it is going for the next injection so like that uh, we will keep the multiple uh, uh, samples are standard in the queue and we can start and we will work it on, on the other uh, jobs okay so no need of uh, one person to be uh, in the front of the instruments so we can keep the sample and load it and we can start and we can go for the next uh, work so fully automated so like that only this auto sampler is working so this is the complete instrumentation of ion chromatography then uh, we will see uh, automatic technique arjun sir yeah yeah i will start okay Uh, one more thing which I want to say here: this is entirely software operated, and uh, the software is installed in the computer. So you get to uh, completely control the instrument to, through this, and uh, with one software, we can we can even control four instruments. So that is also possible, or four detectors also it's possible to monitor. So this is about uh, ion chromatography session. Now I will shift to. voltmetry hope you can see my screen yes sir yeah okay so we have seen so far uh, um, uh, chromatography based technique uh, <clears throat> as i said earlier when i started my uh, lecture like chromatography spectroscopy and electroanalytical methods so, so these are the main analytical methods so we have seen spectroscopy so now we will see uh, the, uh, one of the electroanalytical methods used for the analysis of metals specially and this instrument is only for metals down to ppb ppt only we talk about sub ppm to patch per trillion only here okay so that's the speciality of this instrument a uh, very compact instrument and uh, as the heading says trace analysis and metal speciation so i welcome once again so we will see a overview of what is voltmetry what are the electrode types and uh, what are the voltmetry techniques available measurement modes calibration techniques advantages and summary so basically Uh, electroanalytical methods means there are three main categories so you basically uh, use the principles of electrochemistry so where we we study an analyte whether it is a concentration or uh, whether we do the identification that is quality qualitative analysis or we want to do the redox behavior so how we do it is that we measure the potential or the current in an electrochemical cell containing the analyte so basically we need a electrochemical cell whether we are doing electrolysis or without electrolysis that we will see so there are three main categories one is the potentiometry one is the coulombometry and one is the voltmetry so we will see here uh, voltmetry as one of the electrochemical methods for uh, quantitative as well as qualitative determination of analytes so here also we are talking about ions and we have to prepare the sample in such a way that our metals are in the free form so information about the analyte in the electrochemical cell is obtained by here is measuring the current by applying the potential which is varied with time so basically voltmetry means volt amperometry 
So there is an voltage ramp applied to a set of electrodes and uh, based on the reduction or oxidation, we measure the current. So basically you, measure, you apply voltage and you measure the current. So that is voltammetry. So this was first uh, described by uh, Herovsky from the East Europe. So he's the man who had uh, found out this technique. Probably we must have done in the colleges where there is a mercury pool of mercury coming in from the top using a tube coming into the polarograph. So polarography probably you must have heard a number of times in your college days. So that is something similar to this. And we have a new instrumentation for that. That's the first instrument which was brought about by Herovsky. So he bought, got a Nobel Prize in 1959 for this technique. So basically we have a three electrode system. So one is the oxidated electrode. This is something similar to our electrochemical detector, which we saw in just a few slides back. So you can see here, we have the working electrode, we have the oxidated electrode, and we have the reference electrode. So we apply the potential between the working and the reference, and we measure the current between auxiliary and working. So this is how it is. So measuring cell, as I said, this is electrochemical cell. So we have this uh, reference electrode, working electrode, and auxiliary electrode. So now you can see, we want to measure the amount of lead ions present, lead in the sample. Okay, so how we do it? So we apply a voltage. So when we apply a voltage, so you can see here, lead ions reducing. So you can see here, lead two plus. These are all lead two plus going into the mercury drop. So where they get reduced and they form lead metal and they form amalgam. So basically we use mercury as the working electrode because mercury can combine with a metal and they can form amalgam. So this is the property of mercury which is being used. So that is the reason we are using mercury. So here, as you see, it is moving towards the cathode. So the principle of voltammetry is like this. So we can, so you can see here, I is the y-axis, U is the potential. So when we keep applying a potential, nothing happens exactly from here, but from this point onwards, there's a reduction happening. So there is a complete reduction happening. And at this point, all the lead ions are completely reduced. I'm taking red example because we have just seen lead two plus. So there is a complete reduction here, entire lead two plus is uh, reduced, and then you have a flat current. And just for when you plot this thing, you get a U half or the E half. So you must have heard of halfway potential in, in your studies. So this given a electrochemical condition, uh, given a particular electrode, when we have a particular E half, that means when there is a reduction, so when it starts reducing, so you get a he half, he half. So you, uh, when we say that at this particular potential the reduction starts and you have a e half, so that means your sample is having lead in that sample. If there is a particular, for example, it uh, reduces at uh, with ammonium acetate buffer at 4.6 buffer, uh, when we apply a voltage and we have at 78, 780 millivolts, we have, uh, lead, then we have at uh, 550 millivolts, we have cadmium. So it is all set. So given a condition at a particular, let's say pH, this is because these are pH specific applications. If there is a change in the pH, it mean it will not happen. So that is the reason I'm saying it's pH is very much essential because buffers are extensively used in this technique. So we apply a potential modulation also. So where it is applied, you can see here. So we get a resulting curve. So every at every step of potential, there is a rise in the potential for some time and there is measurement here. So these two are the measurements taken and these are I1 and I2, and then you plot a curve, you get a peak. So this is actually called the voltammogram. And here we do not consider the area under the curve. We are taking the height of the peak height only because amount of current is measured by the peak height. So this peak height is proportional to the amount of sample present in your sample. And this is again a relative technique. We have to compare it with the standard. 
so again it's a relative technique so it's a as i said this is a three electrode system and uh, we are using reference electrode mostly silver silver chloride uh, three molar kcl because it provides a very stable reference potential of 208 millivolts so this is how it looks so this is how the reference electrode looks which gives you stable potential of 208 millivolts then we have the auxiliary electrode many times we use platinum platinum is used because as you know it is inert to any many of the chemical reactions so that is the reason we use platinum but in case we have to use glassy carbon where we use glassy carbon is if very very small current is produced so we need a larger surface area there we use glassy carbon so that is more efficient in determining even a small current but at a larger surface area so it is much enhanced so this is the reason we use glassy carbon auxiliary electrode so this is the multi mode electrode which we use actually mercury is used in this electrode different modes are used one is the dropping mercury which you must have studied in polarography dropping mercury static mercury and hanging mercury what exactly happens during these three so we can see here the color changes so here we have the mercury pool that is yellow in color so this is the mercury this is the needle well this is the capillary and here you see a drop of mercury here so basically what is happening is this needle controls the flow of mercury into this capillary when the needle is completely open when the need please note when the needle is completely open there is a continuous flow of mercury drop that means it is called a dropping mercury electrode now when the needle opens and closes so there is a static mercury for a moment it is static and then it drops off so this is this opening and closing of the needle valve is done uh, using the software so this needle when it opens and closes frequently it leads to the formation of static mercury dropping electrode and we have one more electrode which is called the hanging mercury dropping electrode where the entire analysis is done on a single drop so what happens is the needle opens once and then closes and the drop hangs so that is why it is called hanging mercury drop electrode so this is the electrical contact and this is the tapper this is for tapper which is for for the hedge, uh, mercury drop to fall so this is the tapper which is used so dropping mercury you can see here so this is the difference between dropping and so you can see here the drop continuously falls when the needle valve is open here the drop forms then falls forms then falls here the drop hangs so you can see here drop area so it grows bigger and then falls drop area grows bigger and then falls so here you can say it grows stays and then falls grows stays and then falls so that is the reason it's called static mercury this is dropping mercury and this is hanging mercury so here it grows and then stays for longer time so this is what is means by the multi mode electrode now which electrode to use in which application so dme that is dropping mercury is used for higher ppm levels for lower ppm levels static mercury and for ppp ppt levels we use hanging mercury drop electrode and rotating disc electrodes so these are the mercury electrodes up to hmde so these are the rotating disc electrodes so we have glassy carbon we have gold we have silver we have platinum these are all called solid state electrodes these are all working electrodes only we have very recently some 6 uh, 7 years back we have introduced economical electrodes we call this sc trace electrodes these are nothing but <clears throat> electrode which is having all three electrodes in one shaft so basically working electrode you see a thin gold wire then we have the auxiliary electrode which is carbon and we have the reference electrode which is silver silver chloride so this is we called as a 
SC traced gold electrode, which is used for, let's say, mercury analysis or arsenic speciation, etc. And many applications we have developed with these electrodes. <clears throat> so, how do you select which electrode for which application? So, based on the concentration of the analyte as well as the half wave potential of the analyte. And we have established nodes over the years. Application bulletins are there with us. Application notes are there with us. Application works are there. Approved methods. It is, this technique is also approved internationally. So only limited optimization is required. So like basically you can see here uh, maximum possible working range of different electrode materials. So you can see here when we use a mercury electrode, we can use up to this point. So up to one volt. So basically it is like that. Similarly, carbon, glassy carbon and ultra trace ca carbon electrodes can be used even up to 1.2 volts. Gold right from 0 0.6, minus 0 0.6 to 1.2. So like this, it differs for the different electrodes. But mercury, we can use at the very, very wide range. So maximum possible metals are possible with mercury electrodes. So this is the some of the applications I would uh, suggest. So mercury, we can do zinc, cadmium, lead, copper, nickel, cobalt, chromium, antimony, bismuth, Fe, uranium, selenium, platinum, rhodium, thallium, then tin. Mercury, heavy metals, we can do some of the compounds also, 4CBA, thiomersal. Thiomersals are used in vaccines, <clears throat> thiourea, then gold. It is possible arsenic, mercury, copper, these are all possible. So these are the other applications with respect to different electrodes. As I said, electrolytes are very important in voltammetry technique. So why the why we have to use electrolytes? It increases the conductivity, uh, adjusts, it adjusts the pH. So it acts as a buffer. Then sometimes it complexes the analyte. We call that as adsorptive stripping voltammetry. Then it increases the selectivity. So these are the other reasons for which an electrolyte is used. So here also, we, we can assure you, we can assist you with our established applications using our application bulletins. So electrolyte, as I told you, there are different electrolytes. So you can see here, as I said, pH 4.6 acetate buffer. With this, in the electrochemical cell, level, three electrodes set up with mercury, we can do zinc, we can do nickel, we can do cadmium, lead, copper analysis. So these are all possible in a single run. So that is possible. Then we have, I'll tell you the differentiation between polarography and uh, stripping voltammetry. So polarography basically uses a dropping mercury electrode and that too it's used only for PPM levels. But stripping voltammetry, we I will explain you what exactly stripping voltammetry in the coming slide. So let me, and that is used for the majority PPB level analysis. So how we use, I can show you. See polarography, I showed you that lead ions moving towards mercury drop because it is a negative electrode, moving towards mercury drop and forming an amalgam. So you can see here lead 2 plus forming amalgam with mercury lead metal. Okay. Now, this is a reduction reaction. So, this reduction reaction leads to reduction current, which is proportional to the amount of analyte present in the sample. And this is, this you can use it for quantification. But this can be used for higher PPMs only. If I have to determine, let's say, PPB level analysis, this polarography will not help. So, how do I use? I use stripping voltammetry technique, where initially, I deposit the lead ions into a, into mercury as lead metal. I uh, form a amalgam. Then I change the polarity from negative to positive and I apply reverse current, that is oxidation current. So the metals are stripped back into solution as in the form of ions. That is lead metal is stripped back into the solution as lead, lead 2 plus. So this helps us in doing the analysis down to PPB, PPT levels. So I will show you here. So first step is cathode. So where mercury electrode is there. So I, I 
deposit copper ions you can see here copper is getting deposited in the as copper metal then the next step i reverse the polarity i make this work mercury electrode as positive electrode mercury or gold electrode it, we are making it positive and we are applying a potential where copper ions are stripped back into solution as copper ions so during this the oxidation occurs and there is an oxidation current which is measured so this is proportional to the concentration of the analyte present in the sample so we are doing this for sample as well as standard so in this way we are able to do down to ppb ppt level analysis so this is how we do so this is a peak evaluation what you see here as i showed you earlier we go by the peak height because that indicates the amount of current generated which is proportional to the amount of sample amount of analyte present in the sample so coming to the calibration techniques there are two ways in which we follow one is the regular one we plot a calibration curve then we plot then we do the sample and compare the peak height with the calibration curve this is the traditional one which we use in spectroscopy chromatography etc there is something unique in this technique which we call it as a standard addition what we do here is we analyze the sample first then we add the known amount of standard so now we compare this is the most reliable technique of evaluation why because i know how much if i add 0.1 ml of 1 ppm i know how much current it should measure how much current i will get for example this is 0.1 ml and this is 0.2 ml okay this 0.2 0.1 ml of this first peak uh, this is sample this 0.1 ml of 1 ppm i know how much it should come if i am if i am getting the same current same expected current that means the matrix effect is not there so this is the most important information i get from this technique so if i achieve what i expect that means a matrix effect is not there and my analysis is definitely reliable so this really helps us in uh, making sure of the analysis part so this is the best technique i would advise in case if you go for this instrument for the analysis of metals so this is how we do standard addition curves cadmium lead analysis lead analysis etc then one more advantage is va is again you can do speciation so you can determine different oxidation oxidation states of the same metal chromium 3 chromium 6 fe2 fe3 arsenic 3 arsenic 5 so these are the uh, one more advantages of va where we can do speciation when you compare with complementary techniques like uh, icp ms or icp oes or as there you cannot do speciation whereas here of course with icp ms it's possible but icp oes it is not possible but and there you may have to spend argon one cylinder per day here it is not the case we use simple nitrogen 99.99% nitrogen cylinder and it will last for a minimum 8 months even if you run 24 by 7 the instrument so that's the not only the capital cost is less when the running cost is very very less so some of the examples are arsenic 3 arsenic 2 arsenic 5 uh, this is done as i uh, told you using the screen printed electrodes these are called as screen printed electrodes sc trace means screen printed electrodes then chromium species in hydrothermal solutions so we have done it in hydrothermal solutions in ship in ship this analysis was done the instrument was carried in a ship online it was done doing in the sea water chromium 3 chromium 6 then uh, ppt level analysis of these are the analyte capabilities then environmental samples sample matrices analytes so you can see some of the examples like cadmium lead copper in tap water then nickel and cobalt in tap water then uranium in tap water if you go to punjab so especially the batinda region there are a lot of so much bore wells are there no so uranium is coming out from those bore wells so 
people are scientists are monitoring uranium in those in that section of the uh, of, of our country then similarly if you go to north i mean uh, west to northeast so you have a lot of problems of arsenic so a lot of problems of arsenic in the groundwater so those can be monitored so rhodium palladium uh, platinum in tap water then chromium in tap water then total iron in deionized water this is used in power plants like boiler feed water then mercury in waste water from a waste incineration plant mercury itself you can do though you use uh, we use mercury electrodes for other metals we can do mercury analysis using gold electrode so this is possible with our system this is tungsten analysis on ultra trace electrodes this is cadmium and lead in sea water nickel and cobalt in sea water uranium in sea water so these are the international norms which has approved voltammetry is one of the methods which can be used for this analysis so advantages are no problem with high salt concentrations whether it is a plating bath whether it is sea water etc speciation is possible chromium 3 chromium 6 lowest detection is possible is you can go to sub ppp levels or ppt levels capital outlay is low price and low running cross because we use only nitrogen which can definitely last up to 8 months even if you are using the instrument 24 by 7 so no extensive laboratory you don't have to have a hood or anything nothing is required for such a no civic uh, civil structure needs to be uh, made so it is very simple to use this instrument so now we can see this instrument in our session next sandil 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 sir can you hear me yes yes but i cannot see the screen narendran yeah, just a minute just a minute yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can you see me, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, hi, sir. Once again, welcome uh, you all uh, to the live demonstration of eight eight four VA instrument. Uh, yes. Yeah. Send the straight camera. Ah. Okay. So this is the machine which we have told eight eight four professional VA is also called as voltammetry instrument or. Uh, in other words it's called as polarography uh, instrument so basically the outlet of this instrument is like it's a very small compact machine which is of the size of almost an a4 size paper and here we have the voltammetric vessel to our titration vessel and you can see uh, we can add the samples so we can take the samples in the vessels like this and we can perform the analysis As Nirmal Sir has already explained, uh, we have a three a three electrode system basically in voltammetry instruments. I'll show you here. Yep. So here you can see this is a basic uh, multi-mode electrode, or it's also called as MME. Uh, so multi-mode means like the single electrode itself can work in different different modes, like uh, HMDE mode or hanging mercury drop electrode. Or static mercury drop electrode systems, or dropping mercury electrode, so it can work in different different modes. So basically, it contains or it is filled with mercury, or it contains a reservoir. I'll show you that. Yes. So it contains. This is how the MME looks like. It contains a mercury reservoir, which looks like this. so we can fill around 6 ml of mercury inside and this 6 ml of mercury can be used for uh, producing around 1 lakh of uh, mercury drops and here you can see uh, from that mercury uh, reservoir it will come via that tube it's called as a capillary via the capillary in the tip of the capillary the mercury drop will be forming and which is mainly acting like the uh, work, uh, working electrode So normally in polarography or uh, the, uh, in uh, voltammetry we used to say like it is also a liquid state electrode and a combination of solid state electrode. 
So normally H and D is called as a solid state electrode because one single drop will be staying at the tip of this capillary, and that is used for a complete sweep or one full analysis will be performed by using one single drop of uh, electrode or MME or sorry mercury. And in case of uh, DME and SMD mode electrode, the mercury drop will be falling continuously based on the tapping which is generated by using the electrostat uh, electromagnetic effect in the system. And uh, that uh, gives you the liquid state electrode. So every time a fresh or a new drop will be formed. And uh, this will be used for the high concentration analysis. So normally in HMD, we will be performing with PPB or PPT level analysis. When we do the analysis with uh, a higher PPM level uh, or uh, in uh, about 10 PPM and all, we can use even SMD or DME also for the analysis purpose. And in addition to the working electrode, we have another two more electrodes. One is over here, which is a reference electrode. So it's uh, a normal AG AGCL reference electrode. So in the olden days, people used to uh, use a colorable electrode system. Instead of that, we have a uh, AG AGCL or a silver silver uh, chloride reference system with three molar KCL as the bridge electrolyte over here. So it is uh, like this. And we have a third electrode system, which is called, uh, third electrode, which is called as the auxiliary electrode, which is basically a platinum electrode. So we have different combinations uh, available with this. Uh, one is like uh, the mercury uh, and uh, AG AGCL reference with platinum. In addition to that, we have one more option called as RDE electrode system or rotating disc electrodes uh, with a combination of uh, glassy carbon uh, uh, auxiliary electrode and the same as the reference electrode. And in few of the cases, like for example, if you want to perform the antioxidant analysis or something like that, in that case, you can also uh, use uh, double platinum, means platinum electrode itself as a working and reference system also. So depending on the application, we can swap the electrode system and perform the analysis. So this is how the system looks like. And in addition to this, uh, we have one more electrode system, which is recently introduced as uh, uh, Nelson already explained prior. So we have an electrode system called as a screen printed electrodes. So it's a combination of all three, means working, reference, and uh, auxiliary. All three are present in a single system itself. And this is mainly used for the analysis of arsenic and mercury. Even PPB or PPT level of mercury and arsenic can be determined by using this single electrode itself. It's a high sensitive electrode system. And uh, it is a uh, highly flexible uh, or removable uh, tip system. So the single tip can be used for up to 80 analysis. Uh, and later on, once it is completed, you can replace this with a new tip. So uh, the minimum base or coming to the eco-friendly system. So we are uh, introducing this uh, SC trace electrode or screen printed electrode systems. And this is uh, another electrode which we are uh, having right now. And uh, basically we have some options like nitrogen purging options. So whenever you are taking a sample, the sample will be purged with uh, nitrogen initially to remove the uh, oxygen content present in the sample and will be flushed uh, throughout. And it will be completely performed in a closed vessel system. And we can perform the analysis like uh, as application uh, Narajan sir has told already. Like we can perform like zinc, cadmium, lead, copper, nickel, cobalt, arsenic. And most importantly, like uh, irrespective of just simply metal, we can also determine the speciation or oxidation state of uh, different metals also can be performed by using the uh, same system itself. So this is uh, the outlook of VA instrument and uh, how it uh, looks like. So if you have any queries or any questions related to this, uh, you can uh, go ahead uh, right now. Yes, yeah, for everyone, uh, like you now we are done with the both the techniques as well as the virtual demonstration. So now we can we are open to questions. I hope uh, everyone enjoyed these sessions. Both are complementary techniques. It's all the participants. All the participants can raise your hands for any queries or any discussion with the sir. Or you can post your question or query in the question answer box or chat box also. Namika, some people were raising hand. Please check. Ah, yes, yes, ma'am. Veshali Rao, ma'am, is raising. Ma'am, you can ask. Veshali, ma'am.
हेलो मैम एम आई ऑडिबल यस मैम हाँ just like chromium ion or fluoride ion yes yes it is possible see uh, it all depends see suppose you say i want to do all the ions all the ions means i am talking including uh, mercury i am saying yeah right. if you say i want to do all the transition metals as well as i want to do group 1 group 2 uh, right from lithium to then calcium group then i want to do halides everything then ic and voltammetry put together gives you a very good solution whichever okay, even okay. you take waste water also uh, okay ic and voltammetry okay. voltammetry yes okay. it's a very good combination they are uh, they complement each other these two techniques and, and we uh, get accurate results yes definitely it is comparable okay, okay. thanks a lot sir there are thank many you. customers who are using this map okay okay thank In you sir the, thank yeah, you thank you any other questions hello sir respected yes. niranjan sir yes sir yes sir tell me sir yes sir so first of all on behalf of chemistry department uh, yes triple v university my heart felt uh, my whole hearted thanks to the entire team of metro because uh, such a clear live demo and uh, i appreciate really appreciate the hard work and the effort from your side thank you sir thank you very much both the presentation as well as the live demo is excellent sir thank you sir thank you very thank much you, sir. sir so few questions sir yes first in the, in the case of voltammetry mm -hmm. suppose if some <clears throat> metals if you have a transient uh, ionic species suppose uh, plus 2 plus 4 in between plus 3 and in the case of manganese variable oxidation states some oxidation state some valencies are uh, ionic valencies are unstable yeah is correct is it possible to uh, detect that transient species no sir uh, those we are uh, we can do on, on determine only those which are stable stable okay. yes okay sir in the second question sir yes we are actually doing a project uh, it's a research we are preparing a, a derivative of medicines okay. synthetic derivative of medicines and mm -hmm. we want to characterize it with help of cyclic voltammetry but it's a neutral molecule is it possible okay. the neutral molecule can be studied organic Sir, uh, molecule <clears throat> see i will give you one small example see sugar i, I cannot do Uh, sugar and for example glucose analysis i showed you an application in ic no glucose and fructose in honey yes, so sugar i cannot do any i cannot it is not ionic in nature so how i do is that i take it to extreme uh, basic ph so during when when i take it to extreme basic ph it starts uh, i mean there is it, it, it becomes like an ion so there i am able to convert it into an ion and then i am able to apply the potential and i am able to oxidize the glucose and that oxidation current is measured so here will you allow us to take it to some extreme condition whether acid or base and then can we do the cv studies because it is a you said it's a neutral molecule it is not charged you said right yes, yeah so um, we, we can explore that if, i mean will will if i add something to that uh, molecule neutral molecule if something if will it get degraded all those things are also there so little bit uh, trivial question but still i mean i don't know uh, we have to check that and see sir okay sir. are you are you into some biosensors or something like that sir uh, no sir actually the 
commercially existing medicine we are preparing a derivative and mm. we want to study the electrical properties okay that's it. okay okay uh, fine in ic sir i have one or two questions yes Doubt. sir yes please you are talking about the percentage conversions of uh, nitrosomines nitrosomines are uh, uh, carcinogenic in nature yes uh, especially the seafood packed seafood mm. we can uh, estimate the percentage conversion of amines into nitrosomine at a regular interval yeah you can see that actually see uh, there are um, if you see this fish how yes, fresh is the fish there is an application with ic how fresh is the fish yes, so like uh, they monitor the bio content of biogenic amines like for example putrescine cadaverin histamines and all so if 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 the levels are very high so that means they 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 monitor uh, this gives you a indication of how fresh is the fish so there is a kit also for that so that can be done with our system so we, it, you can determine these hist how much of histamine is histamine has formed how much of cadaverin is there and how much of putrescine is there so this is possible using ion chromatography that is see normally amines they are believed to be done by gas chromatography but in gas chromatography you have to uh, derivatize it to make it volatile here it is not the case you can do it straight forward so it is possible to do those amines Thank and you, uh, one more thing also i will tell you so this is our recent experience this nitrosamines this is not a hot topic in india uh, because we are a major market for generics we produce a lot of generic uh, medicines isn't it so <clears throat> what they are doing is they are monitoring nitrite content in the process itself so that in the process when nitrosamines are formed the basic reason is because of the presence of nitrites so this nitrite is continuously monitored in whole of the process in the manufacturing of a, a api or any drug so they are monitoring more of nitrite now than of nitrosamines this is one more information which i can give you sure sir yeah sir then another uh, thing sir yes uh, sir you are metrom uh, private india limited you are doing outsourcing sir you are doing sample from outside analysis is it on commercial basis sir no no sir industry institute academic academic research based on the basis of research no sir actually our application lab we do uh, we help our customers in two ways one is in case if you are interested in our instrument so you can send your sample and we analyze and we give we, we give we give you a report okay so based on the, on the report you, either you can procure the instrument or if you want to have a demonstration in since you are going to procure that is also possible whether it are at site or whether at our lab this is a pre sale support post sale support what we do is you have bought one instrument for one particular analyte for one particular method and you are using the instrument and tomorrow you are getting one more project where you have some you need some help from us for establishing a method so there again we help you as a service support so these are the main two supports which we give provide through our application lab we don't do samples on commercial basis okay sir okay sir and uh, on the behalf of student side from our student side uh, and uh, not only our student for all the student side okay. uh, is it uh, you have any uh, agenda uh, to conduct any student training program training program for students instrument training program for students that i will discuss with our management sir that i can discuss with our management i'll let you know sure sir so you you mean for the final year students yes sir msc final year students okay so that we can uh, <clears throat> we will discuss with our management we'll come back to you on that sir sure sir sure sir we'll do that thank you sir thank you mr naranjan sir thank mr. you sir mr surendran sir mr Sindil sir and Mr. Yuvraj sir, thank you sir. One more, Mr. Patel, you can ask your question. Uh, yes, madam. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, actually, it was a nice presentation and live demonstration went very well. I am okay. really happy. Thank But you, sir. Thing, um, 
do you have any portable instrument that on spot uh, any analysis can be done living ph conductivity it can be done with many instrument which has but like a fluoride or a nitrate or arsenate an portable instrument that we can take with our vehicle and on spot we can uh, take the data or we can if we are going visit a village affected village nearby in west bengal odisha on okay. that spot um, hmm. we can do something else uh sir for uh, voltmetry we have a portable instrument which can analyze arsenic and all that is possible but for ion chromatography uh, you want Not to do fluoride and chloride and all no okay uh, fluoride chloride yeah, that, and nitrate yeah that is not possible as of now but uh, what i can suggest you is you can uh, there are instruments uh, being carried on a mobile van where okay. their uh, power supply is through a battery set of batteries there and inverter kind of so there okay. people are doing the analysis online so of course you have to set the systems everything ready uh, you keep traveling and then wherever you go you have to in uh, we can uh, we can you can carry the ic instrument because uh, <coughs> we can always fix it at a fixed in the van itself uh, where there is uh, where it is a vibration free so it is possible to do such an arrangement uh, because we have carried in aircrafts also that is the reason i'm saying so where we do aircraft ships uh, mobile vans actually we are going for the interior villages so road condition will be not better yeah, anything yeah understood so, sir understood actually uh, you are saying that just one minute we are saying mm-hmm. that fluoride can be done with ic but yes. uh, fees are there are fluoride ion selective electrodes nowadays available and that can be cost you 2 3 lakhs 4 lakhs within correct so that instrument yeah yeah you are right you are absolutely right you have ion selective electrodes i agree with you Okay. but the problem with ion selective electrodes is uh, st- shelf life so okay. you want to do fluoride chloride nitrite nitrate is everything is fine i accept with you but fluoride is the only electrode which is uh, having a maybe one year life but not beyond that but other electrodes they just have 4 to 5 months shelf life only unfortunately And then you may oh, have oh. to invest on again 80000 rupees electrode yes 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 so that is the issue that, that is why issue. i am saying <laughs> better to carry an ic with all everything in a vibration free and i mean a table or anything like that it, it is possible sir in such a cases not an issue but okay. this is the sol- or the other solution is you may have to collect it and come back to your lab and you have to do uh-huh. that is the only option that is the better option always <laughs> yeah <laughs> the better yes. another one thing i would like to know from you uh, yes. if you don't mind If there are some colorimeter in market and mm-hmm. they are doing phosphate and nitrate through colorimeter with they are having a specific pouch that a chinese company also producing many like there so mm-hmm. standard pouch are there for nitrate phosphate iron etc so with mm-hmm. colorimeter within 10 minute you can do it and that colorimeter is just like a uh, remote yeah uh, yeah i understand we have but the result called, uh, how yeah. can you believe that result yeah that instrument so first is you said it's a chinese instrument so i have my own doubts <laughs> you know about china china make but products. most of the thing we are using now it is laptop to computer mobile to anything <laughs> <laughs> sir i am just telling you uh, this is our experience also so that is the reason so first thing is uh, direct reading uh, colorimeters are available because even i have used 20 years back in our uh, rec trichy also uh, dr 700 now you have much advanced ones also but the problem is uh, they may work in ppm levels that i agree but ppb maybe let's say 1 to 10 ppb may not be accurate exactly It's very difficult sir exactly i have dear 600 nitrate coming fine within yeah. a ppm level but whenever mm-hmm. i going to phosphate ppb level that's creating problem ah that is a problem sir so that is a, so, so i still will not believe <laughs> okay. last one i will not take your most time Yes. Last one. Your IC and voltmetry combo pack uh, average purchase rate. Uh, I just have an idea. If we okay. want to buy Sir, in the next. Uh, y- y- see if you uh, you can tell me uh, what exactly you want to do because IC grows with applications. So similarly, okay. uh, because I have shown you different detectors, I have shown you uh, different columns. So that is the reason I am asking. If you can uh, write to us, uh, you can write to at info at metrom dot in. so there you can write to us 
like you want to do such and such analytics what is the budget we can always okay. suggest you so you can uh, my request is please be specific in what are the analytics you want to do and which matrix you want to do we'll definitely okay. come back to you sir okay thank you. in your website there is the mail id i i yes. can get it yeah info@metrom.in that's it uh, that's right metrom yeah yeah i can put it in the chat room uh, chat box also ha sir sir okay. please this is what my request please put it in the chat box sir please sure sure yes ma'am i'll do that okay it is fine and again i want like to thank the managing committee those are convener they have arranged such a beautiful uh, so very very nice because li- lively nowadays online lively such type of experimental demonstrations helping us across the india people from various part of country it is very fine my heartfelt thanks to one and all associated with this uh, type of uh, orientation program or seminar thank you sir thank you thank you bye sir one question is there in the box from ajit joshi uh, question is toxic iron especially fluoride can be removed toxic iron and special fluoride can be removed. fluoride can be removed by this technique so question is written in the question no, no, answer no 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 we are into only into analysis part actually we are only into qualitative or quantitative analysis we are not into the process of removing actually it's not a sample preparation tool and sir one more question is there uh, yes. how uh, how does the cation analysis in ic compares with that of icpms okay see cation analysis with ic definitely the results are comparable but you have to uh, see the cost here ic is definitely uh, the running cost is i will say 10 times lesser than icpms because icp means uh, uh, one is you are using a t- icp you, you use a plasma torch one second is you are using an ms which requires a vacuum and uh, ms is minimum 100000 dollars ic is not that case i mean i'm talking about right now if you take dollar value 76 rupees straight away it is 76 lakhs plus icp ms is 1 crore capital cost then running when you run the instrument icp ms you need argon one cylinder per day one cylinder per day argon is going to cost you 8000 rupees roughly these are not required for simple cation analysis even when you do an transition metal analysis also so definitely ic scores over icpms on running cost and the capital cost and the results are definitely comparable so i have t- given my email id as well as our company email id infotmetrom.in so you can write to us in that we will definitely provide you all the feedback yes sir it will be better because i think so many queries are there so, yeah shubham shall i conclude yeah go no. sir thank you very much for very nice presentation and demonstration both really it was really it was very knowledgeable session and uh, the working uh, of without knowing the working of analytical instruments their application so i think one cannot accomplish their research work not only in the field of chemistry but also in all domain of the science so really it was very nice was nice and knowledgeable session for all of us thank you very much for you sir and for your all team members also yes ma'am thank you very much we also on behalf of metro we thank uh, dr kavita sharma madam and the entire management thank of uh, uh, college for giving us an opportunity thank you very much ma'am good day really you did as per our expectation sir it was okay. very effective okay. thanks to you and your team thank you ma'am thank you thank yeah. you